Greetings, viewer. This is Savvy von Armstein. I greet you to my audience in open arms. As you can see here, we have a house, and I will indeed show you how to build this house. Keep in mind that this video is video number one of a multi-video series where I show you how to construct a certain style of house in the genre of Amstinian, or my own style. These houses are going to be featured on the server Darwin Forged in the upcoming role-playing role playing game mode, excuse me, upcoming role-playing game mode of Kingdoms of Darwinia. I plan to have this tutorial, along with the other tutorials, and the next series of tutorials concerning this certain construction style. Well, first we'll go on with essentially just examples of different structures, and then we'll go into mastering the style itself, so that way those of you that are going to be following the Kingdom of Amstein does not necessarily have to follow these strict tutorials. By all means, you can create any kind of house that you want. This is just an example. We won't be doing very much detail with this version. I'm not going to show you how to do the yard, for example, and I'm definitely not going to show you how to do the interior. That is up to you for to decide. This is how much space that we have inside of the house. We have this nice giant hearth here, which I will show you how to make. And then upstairs, this is how much space that we have here. This style mainly focuses around constructive realism. So, with that, be with that being said, there won't be any suspended parts. Everything will look like it's supported somehow. Without further ado, let's get into how the blueprints of this quaint little cottage works. So, as we can see here, we have the layout of the first floor here. This is mainly going to be our guideline for the structure. You can see where we have the orange wool blocks. We are going to put our pillars. That little bit of bricks is where we're going to put the hearth, and then the cobblestone is where we're going to put our walls. The flooring doesn't have to be wooden planks, it can be anything, but keep in mind, realistically, it would be a mixture of different variations of dirt. Now then, without a further ado, as all of you are anxiously waiting, let's get on with building the house. For the first floor, we need to make sure that our walls are going to be four blocks high, though the usable space is only going to be three blocks high. Make sure to make your pillars four blocks high. Just like this. Then we're going to place our horizontal beams on the top blocks, and it's going to crown off the, um, going to crown off the walls here. Make sure that in our concave corners here, we remove the blocks that will essentially be invisible. Now that we have this, we are going to place our walls. Make sure to use clean yellow stucco. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we are using oak beams for our pillars. Make sure here we place our first three block wide window, then here our one block wide window. This is only if you want to copy the house directly. If you don't want to, feel free to place windows wherever you want. So just going to place the last few wall parts here. Keep, keep in mind, the concave corners here, the deletion of the block only applies for these support logs here, not for this part. We want to make sure this stays filled in. We're going to leave this blank here for the hearth. We will do that in a minute. Now, we're going to use the wooden panes. It doesn't matter what kind to use. I prefer to use the second variant of the panes. I do believe also that there's a window here as well. All right, and now we will get on with the second floor. Alright, now the second floor is going to be a little bit tricky. Before we do anything with 
uh, framing for the roof, first we need to make sure that we have the framing for the overhang, which is going to go here. Make sure that you have the oak beam pillar variant here, and you place your support beam there. Now we're going to take uh, vertical oak beams and then horizontal oak beams, and we're going to place them under this support beam here. Finally, we're going to add in some supports for the flooring of the neck of the second floor. Then we're going to delete the useless blocks of the second floor, which is mainly going to consist of those blocks there. Now we can get into framing the second floor. Make sure that your wall parts of the second floor are two blocks high. This is not to say that the actual usable space is going to be two blocks high. However, it keeps it balanced and it makes sure that the house isn't too large. If you were to try to do it at any other height, the house would feel unbalanced. I'm going to top that off there. Simple as that. Now we're going to fill in the floor with some dark birch logs. I find these to be quite nice with the color palette. Just fill in this space here, but make sure that we have enough space for the stairwell, which is going to be here. Now, in the next part, we're going to add in the facing for this house. So, for the facing of the house, we're going to use more wooden panes white plaster, and a variation of Tudor boxes. I'm not going to tell you how you should do your Tudor boxes, all I know is that it needs Tudor boxes, and they need to make sense. So, first we're going to take our white plaster, we're going to place it on the non-front facades of the roofs. The facades are these, um, sloped bits right here. Yeah, I'm telling you professional architecture. Now, we're going to do our Tudor frames. Just on the bottom, do the upper pointing arrows, and then doing the um, different slash designs, and then doing the X frames on all of the major roof apexes. Should appear like this. Make sure here we also have these here. It just looks nice. Then we're going to fill in our openings with windows. Make sure here we're going to do a bay window, just like that. It's just one, one window block there, one there. Leave this one open and then place all the other ones one block further out. It's quite nice to be perfectly honest. We're also going to do another one despite this contradicting um, common medieval architecture. Once you've built your windows, we should be good to go for the next part. Now we're going to do the next part, and the next part is the beginning of the roofing and the gables, as long, along with um, any more second floor details that we need to do before we continue on to the next part of the build. So, to establish our gables, we're going to place our thatch on the roof first. Make sure that we have one block overhang over the sides. These are quite critical when we're creating a nice thatched roof design on these types of houses. Then we're going to... Oh man, I almost forgot to add these. We need our slabs on here as well. Yes, we definitely need our slabs. Okay, once we've done that, we now need to add in the gables. We're going to use wooden staircase blocks because, honestly, to be, you know, sensible, these are the only blocks that really make sense to use as gables. Make sure that your gables are one block lower than your um, eaves here. But Savius, you may be thinking. That's not how you do medieval houses! Well, guess what? Realistically, 
this is how you would do a thatched house. On these parts here, we need to ensure that we have these thatch blocks here, and then we need to have our awning for the bay window here. Next, we need the apex of the um, these wonderful gables here. And we're going to do that with the dark oak fence gates. Then we're going to add the overhang of thatch that go with them. Make sure that on this block too, we add in a gable, just for detail. It looks better, trust me. Oh man, I only did one roof. Whoa. Okay, so we're just going to quickly do these parts here. And then for these spots here, where we can't really place our dark oak fence gates, we need to place a wall of spruce log slab and place it the block under, which generally means upside down. Now we're just going to do this again on this side. Nice and easy. Along with on this side. That should be all. Next part that we're going to do, which I'm going to skip over because, to be perfectly honest, it's quite monotonous. I'm going to fill in the roof here. And then we're going to do the final details on the gables, the bay window there because we have a little bit more to do, and then we're going to work on the hearth. Finally, we're going to do the interior details, and then we can consider this house completed. Alright, and as you can see, we have quite a difference here, and this house is already looking very much complete. We just have a few more things that we have to do. First off, you'll notice we'll have this, we have this rather gaping hole here. Quite simply enough, use the clothes hanger blocks, which yeah, sounds quite conspicuous, but works quite well, and you want to put them under here, just like this. That way, it just looks nice, and it fills that hole perfectly. Look at that. It's absolutely level. Now, with this, you'll notice I took out a block of the uh, of the thatch. That's the way we have room for the um, the chimney. The next part is where these where these um, founding pillars go. We need to make sure that we have these wonderful vertical beam horizontal joints under our um, gables. This makes it look like the gables are supported, and it just adds that much detail. You can do it on all of them if you want, you can do it on some if you want. This is just personal preference, you don't have to do this. I just find this to be the most ideal. Next, we're going to do the underside of the gables here. Make sure that your gables run along the bottom part of the eave here. This is very important, because otherwise, if I were to see a build like this, I would consider it to be a floating roof. I know that many of you watching this right now probably have not constructed a thatched roof, and neither have I, but I have definitely seen reasons for fixing thatch roofs, and one of them being that the eaves have fallen off because they were not supported. This will ensure that it looks like the eaves are actually supported by the gables. Now we're going to do the hearth here, which should not be too tedious. On the inside here, we need to make sure that we have our our frames of the hearth. You know, simple enough. On the outside, we need to make sure to have our blocks here, full blocks, then corner blocks along the side here. Quite a sudden shift. Then we're going to do more side blocks here, and then we're going to remove this block and replace it with stairs. I forgot to get those. We need stairs here. We also need to grab this here, and on the inside, we can leave this blank, as I'm concerned. Give me a quick moment. Alright, and I have just checked my hearth, and I have done a few errors. Whoopee, we all love errors. And here we're just going to go ahead and place the bottom part of the hearth here. We're going to place our stairs here. We're going to knock out this block here, because this is going to have hot coals. That's right, you heard me. Hot coals. Then here, we're just going to have these blocks here. 
I'm just I'm just gonna fill this in. Then as I check this again, we're going to have our full blocks here. And then we're going to have our regular blocks here, and they're going to fill in there. Yes, it's looking quite familiar now. I believe I can construct it from here. We're just going to fill it in with this, and then we're going to extra sneakily place an upside down stair there. It just adds so much more detail. Now we're going to take the vertical slabs and we're going to run them up the sides here. And that includes this block here. Then from there we're going to simply place our normal bricks and we're going to run them up a certain height. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it's somewhat realistic. Then we're going to take our brick blustrade and place it on top. And that there is our wonderful hearth. Absolutely wonderful hearth. Now we're going to work on the interior details. These are going to be the final parts. As we fly over here... Actually, take that. Yes. As we fly into here, we'll notice we have these nice little spruce plank stairs and railing to accompany it. By far, I find these to be quite the nicest stairs for any kind of peasant or non higher classed person's stairs, as it just fits it. It looks quite cheaply made, and it's very, you know, peasant -y. I'm going to put it like that, peasant -y. I'm going to coin that term. Nobody else can use it, only me. Now we're going to finish up our stairs here. We're going to create the places for our railing. To get rid of this wall here. We're going to add another horizontal right not stair railing there. Then it's just going to be all the way down to um, this part here, which is quite vital. Make sure that your horizontal beams here are over the hole for the staircase and not next to it. That way we can amp we can maximize the amount of space available. And if you want, for just some odd, odd and ends detailing, you could add that there. It doesn't really work for me. I don't like it. Finally, we're going to do the last, last parts of the detailing. We're going to take these blocks here, and we're going to take a door. In my opinion, jungle doors work quite nice for peasant homes. Shabbily made, but they're doors. Up here, we're going to add our horizontal connections here. And then we're going to add our horizontal beams along these bits of thatch. That way, it looks like not only is the roof supported inside, on the outside, it also looks like it's supported inside. It's your choice to run these down to the floor. I prefer to do that, but you can do otherwise. Make sure to also light your hearth. I cannot express that enough. Uh, flint. Nice little bit of detail. Quite nice. And now we can officially consider this house done. For a last little bit of detail, if the hearth is lit, make sure to add steam blocks on the edges of this piece here, just so that way people can have a little bit more detail that is quite nice to look at. And that is pretty much it. We can finally consider this house done. and. You now have an amazing little peasant cottage that you can call your own. For block variations, you can make sure to add in this yellow plaster and cobblestone mixture and just scatter it around the walls, either just a little bit here, a little bit there, maybe a spot there. It's all up to just your own creative license. I am not showing you how to do detail, however, if you're relatively new to this kind of detail, 
go ahead and just follow along what I'm doing, I guess. Not the end of the world. Just know that my tutorials will not often feature placing in some block variations. That is a rare occurrence. So yeah, we're pretty much done. Without further ado, if you like this video, please make sure to make that known and press that like button down there. If you have any suggestions or comments, make sure to make that known as well. I always like to see what you have to say about these tutorials. Um, I have to give a big thanks to the Conquest for Forge team for creating such an amazing mod pack. I've been around since the um, resource pack of the days, and I'm telling you, this mod is revolutionary. Also, big thanks to Darwin Reforge for actually giving me a little bit of refuge from the stresses of life, as I like to call it. Enough of the drama of that. Um, nothing else really more to say. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. I'll make sure to have more content for you in the future. And this is Savius von Amstein, and until next time.